Right now on VFN TV, we've been hearing a lot about the borders of America, the crisis that's happening at the borders. We've been seeing footage of people coming into America's country without coming in legally. We've been hearing political people talk about what they're using, the specific pain of people for their political gain, and where is the compassion in all that? We're going to talk about all this and so much more right now on VFN TV. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. We've been hearing again and again about the borders of America and what's taking place. You think about what is the job of the president of the United States, no matter who he or she is. One specific thing stated in the Constitution is what makes up our country. It says they have to protect the borders, protect the borders, the outline of your country. And why do they do that? Be able to have a country. Without having borders, you don't have a country. Well, recently, you know, we've been seeing on the news where people had just been basically ignoring our borders, just coming over instead of coming through the doors. They're coming over illegally into our country, by the thousands, actually. And with that, it's causing a crisis. And we're here and seeing people use them for their political gain. It's like, do you, don't you even care about the pain and the crisis people are in? Well, I'm Greg Lancaster, and joining me is John Ramos. Hello. And we've been seeing what's been taking place for quite some time. And we're going to talk about, too, about the compassion that we're supposed to have as Christians, you know, for everybody on the face of the earth, That's people right. in your country and not in your country. Because we'll try to reach the world yeah, correct. for Christ. Wall or no wall, we're on both sides of the wall. That's I mean, right. for example, like the, the Catholic uh, Church, you know, they, the, the, Vatican. the Vatican has a wall, but they're on both sides of that wall, mm -hmm. right? And China has a wall, but they're on all sides of that wall, <laughs> right? And uh, the leadership. Firewalls and everything. Firewalls, <laughs> yeah. But I'm just, I'm just saying is that, you know, there's two viewpoints. One, you have a, a national viewpoint of your country. Sure whether you're France, whether you're America, whether you're Israel, whether you're you know, Jordan, whoever you are, and then you have a, a global viewpoint of wanting to be able to reach the world. But when you've been seeing, you know, without a border around your country, you don't have, you don't have a country. Yeah. And people who don't care about the borders don't care about the country. And people who say they care about people that are not caring about the borders, they're not caring about the country that they're in, they're actually bringing destruction to it. Absolutely, when, when you suffer, the country suffers what America suffered with 9-11, with terrorists, people that yes. in this world a literally say, we people, hate yeah. you, yeah. we want to do damage to you, and they've already done it. It's just ignorant not to think that, that those things can't happen again. And well, so mm -hmm, you have mm -hmm. to protect your homeland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't leave your front door open in your house. We actually close the door and lock it. Mm -hmm. well, well, they don't put two difference. and two together when they do this, when people are saying, you, know, you shouldn't protect the borders. But they're the ones that have gated communities, they have armed guards sure. around them, they have, you know, wealth to be able to do that. And what happens is people are moving in and, and it's wonderful people are coming to the United States. Of course. It's it's a it's it's we're, there's so many immigrants already in uh, America. We're all we're come a from immigrant, of immigrants. A nation of immigrants. But it's it's important to be legal, come in legally, because one specific thing as a citizen, you have to take the citizenship test when you come in legally. And part of it is that I renounce all loyalties to all popes and kings and potentates. And what it is, you're becoming loyal to America and your fellow American. And That's you, a good thing. Yeah, That's exactly. a good thing. And, and if you come in any other way than the legal way, then you don't get a chance to be able to, to focus on you know, letting your neighbor know that I am committed to the same values That's that you right. have. I am committed to the Constitution. I am committed to defending you in this nation in a time of war, whatever it may be. One of the things that keeps America such a special place is, is, a, is our laws, our Constitution. Right. Well, if you don't even know the Constitution, how could you abide mm -hmm. in, you know, in, in, a, in a place like this? I mean, people think Constitution because so many of the education people, you know, whether, no matter whether they're in education, some, many of them have, have actually uh, degraded what the Constitution is. But the, without the Constitution, there is no Washington, D.C., Hmm. There is no president, there is no Congress, there is no judiciary branch, there's no judges, there's no police officers, there's no law, there's no, there's no borders, <laughs> but it's all written inside the Constitution. You have, you, you, people could just barge in your home, but there's a certain bill of right against that. And I know we got to get right to the program, but understand that you can't belittle the Constitution because it's the very thing that allows you not to be robbed tonight in your That's home. Right. And if somebody does, it's the very thing that allows justice to come for everybody. Because there's really, there's no such thing as... As, as social justice, there's only justice for mm. everyone. Everybody deserves justice. 
And that's why you want Jesus Christ to be Lord of your life because you need mercy in your life. Yep. So we're going to the borders here with Maria, right? Maria Bartiromo. Yes. She's actually out of the office. <laughs> right. And she went straight to the borders and had a conversation with Border Patrol to see firsthand what was occurring. And she asked them a question like, how are these people, wh where are they coming from and how did they hear that there was opportunity for them here in America? You're gonna be surprised by what the Border Patrol had to say. In fact, take a look. The word is definitely out. I mean, they have advertisements by radio. You listen to your radio on your way to work, on your way to the grocery store. And um, that country's advertising. Uh, if you want the American dream, we'll help you out. And uh, we'll help you, we'll, we'll teach you how to get it in the United States. I remember when I was in law enforcement, I was looking and possibly shifting to a job that was paid more, which the Border Patrol paid more. I, I thought about going to Border Patrol too when I was in college. Did you? So they told me, uh, you, you, you're not going to want to come The Lord out says, y'all need TV. Y'all yeah, can't go to the border right there. there. <laughs> but they, that's a huge job because it's basically desert territory, and you're out there trying to help people and, and, and also secure the borders. And it, we're putting American citizens, the Border Patrol officers, in a very bad crisis themselves because it's difficult being law enforcement. But okay. when you have some people getting political gain over their position, they're going out to enforce the laws that that legislator made, and actually now you're actually getting onto them for making them the bad guy. They're doing their job. <laughs> it's just sad what people are doing for political gain nowadays. Yeah. And the thing about it, human beings are in the crisis why they're actually doing this stuff sure. for political gain. And they're hearing radio yeah. advertisements in their own country come to the United States. We will help you. And they're hearing this. They're they're working and they're maybe in a place where it's not as prosperous. And they're saying, Hey, right. I, I want a better future. I've had spoken to so many people that have come, illegal immigrants and immigrants have come to the United States because you're looking to benefit from this blessed place that many of us take for granted. Well, there's a big difference between illegal immigrants and immigrants yeah. because we're all immigrants. But you think about this and I understand, you know, over and over again about, you know, why somebody would want a better place. Of course you'd want a better place. Anybody would. But the, th the fact about it, the argument that says because people are in crisis, they can break the law to come into the country. Right, but think yeah. about this, you're in Jersey, hello Jersey, and you're going through a crisis this week because your funds are low, been there, done that, right? And you need some funds, and you're actually worried about it, you're concerned about it. But the good thing about it, according to these politicians that are saying what you can do, there's a bank up the street, they got all <laughs> kinds of money. Now you have legal bank operators, and then you have illegal <laughs> bank operators. But based on these policies, because you're hurting, they're saying you could go down and rob yeah. that bank. No, I'm not saying that. That's what they're saying. Is that crazy? But that's what they're saying. It's either legal or it's illegal. Right. You know, either either you can rob banks or you can't rob banks. Either you can break the law or you can't break laws. And it's really hard for law enforcement because they're a law enforcement officer. That's all they're doing is enforcing the law. So if you say, enforce this law, but not that law, but this law. Yesterday you were good, but today's bad. And they right. did that quite a bit when I was in law enforcement where they were putting politically putting this twist on officers and they didn't know whether to, we didn't know whether to enforce the law or not enforce the law which puts their That's life in good. danger you don't know if you're going to get yeah. killed in the line of duty or doing that and it's just it's it's just not called to be that way these people just trying to instead of just convincing you and making a political arg argument to you giving the, their ideas to you and explain, letting you vote on the idea, they realize you're gonna go, that's a stupid idea, I'm not gonna yeah. vote on that. So they try to manipulate and do it a different way. But in America, it's a land of laws. You gotta vote on, on things because you're the people that we need to hear from you. And if, if you don't win the vote, it doesn't go your way. And that's where people that are carrying on. I know we gotta go to break right now, but John, what's next? Well, listen, when we get right back from this break, we're gonna join Maria and the Border Patrol as they literally, right before them, as they're talking, see families crossing the borders and some of the things you're gonna see in here are really gonna to touch your heart. Don't forget, comment below. We wanna hear from you, we wanna hear your thoughts. What do you think about what's happening with all these folks coming across the borders? Is it a good thing, is it a bad thing? And, and what do you think others should do? What's the solution to ending this crisis? There's a hum, hum, humanitarian aspect of it, but of course there's people that are entering our country illegal and there's a whole bunch of ramifications as a result. We want to hear from you. Don't forget to join us after this break. We'll be right back. I want to talk to you about our book. My book is out and it's ready for you right now. I will fight 10 strategies to fight for your success. Listen, so many people in the world understand if you're going to be successful, you got to fight for it. 
And many people who are believers and Christians think that just success falls out of the sky. But God has created the earth to respond to your labor. He's created the universe to respond to you believing in faith what he's going to do. So I share in this book very specifically about biblically, biblical fights that have happened, but also got 10 uh, specific uh, strategies to be able to help you. I don't care if you're a CEO. I don't care if you're a congressperson or a senator. I don't care if you're a janitor, a business owner, a teacher, a pastor. If anybody knows needs to know how to fight, pastors need to know how to fight for success and, and define you know what success is. But I talk specifically, and I begin in this book, is about uh, how God spoke to me and why am I writing the book? God showed me specifically in a dream, a pro prophetic dream, several dreams, but one was that he has a wealth transfer coming and he wants to deliver wealth to his people but they don't have the character and the integrity to be able to, to manage that wealth. He's, he's told, he told me that he's been getting a lot of money and wealth to them, but it goes right through their fingers like holes in a bowl. So they have to learn how to be able to develop strategies, biblical strategies to be able to position, be positioned. Why? Because a great harvest of souls is coming and it's gonna take many, many dollars to be able to bring in that harvest. And it's gonna be God's people who will fund that. And so he's looking for people that are, are willing to say, I want to be positioned. This is all about being positioned for great wealth. And it's not necessarily great wealth and money. It could be great wealth and influence, whatever God has entrusted you with. So get your, it's a free book. You just cover shipping and handling. We want to send it to you for free. And uh, you can go to vfnkb.com for all the details. You can see it on your screen. But listen, it's here. It's right here for you. Wonderful thing. Oh my, how many nuggets? I mean, maybe... Uh, 500, 600 yeah. <laughs> wisdom nuggets in addition to these success strategies. It's yours now at vfnkb.com. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. In this case, a familiar emoji smiling face with a halo. Bible Emoji Scripture for Millennials was released last week through Apple iBooks with the Bible translated using 80 emoji icons throughout the books of the New and Old Testament and with 15% fewer words and the use of emojis and popular contractions, the King James Version text is intact. The translator, whose signature is the familiar smiling face with sunglasses, says, the Bible, more than any other book, has a rich history of translation. And in this case, the Bible emoji makes sharing a Bible verse with friends fun and interesting. For millennials, its icons are familiar territory. But as might be expected, engaging with the Bible emoji is resulting in both positive and negative reactions, not unlike the history of the Bible itself. Brought to you by Museum of the Bible. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Welcome back to VFN TV with your host, Greg Lancaster. So you're looking at the borders and what's taking place, you know, as Christians, as, as you know, global Christians, you know, we're concerned about every the side of every other nation's fences including right. our own that's right but even in people's own property there's a reason why they have locks on your door maybe your children have locks on their door you might remember so anyway so <laughs> but in the context of that is that that you know even think about this even heaven god who created the heavens and the earth you and all of us he has border walls around heaven and he has gates made of pearls. And he says people who actually can, the, who can come in heaven and who cannot come in heaven. That's right. And if you enter legally through Jesus Christ by the blood of the lamb, you can get in. But if you come in any other way, he says you're a thief and a robber. Now this is God. So and if you get you know, in without, right. without the right clothes, you get thrown out too. <laughs> right, salvation, the gown of salvation yeah. he's talking about. You know, that if you're saved, then he, he says just you're dressed in the gown of salvation. So if that's how God who God who created you, every other argument is just whatever. I mean, he even says in Proverbs about don't move the the the, the borders without mm. finding out about from your fathers why, why that's they there. why they were there. Because there's a reason why borders went up. There's a reason why fences went up. And God allows a nation to exist. Understand this. God determines whether a nation will live or whether it will fall, whether it will stand. It's God. If God, if we dis, dis, if we dishonor God and what God's intentions are for America, for example, God will take this nation out in a heartbeat. But if we honor God, if we if we humble and pray and turn from wicked ways and cry out to God and ask God 
to show mercy, God will keep a country. Mm -hmm. But with that, he brings authority in. Romans chapter 13, 1 through 5, they're his, they're his servants to do good and to protect that land and to punish the wrongdoer. And so punishments happen in the context of those who are breaking the law. You know, and so you're looking at right here, Maria's still on the border right here, and she's looking at families crossing and understanding that it's it's more so, you know, where people are being used for political pawns. I mean, they were finding their own countries, but all of a sudden this report went out that says actually in a, it's not true. I mean, it's, it's illegal for yeah. leaders in our country to say something to another country that you can come and break our laws, but it's being sent out. It's saying, come and nobody will stop you, you know, that type of thing. And so they're starting to risk their own lives, and reports are, each of these people potentially have paid $10,000 or more per person to the drug cartel, the cartel, the drug cartel, to be able to, to what's that called when you're transporting a human beings? Or it's human trafficking. Yeah. They're, they're trafficking in humans. So the people that are promoting this are putting money in the drug cartel, who, by the way, do not hesitate to decapitate, mm. to cut off limbs, to put fear all over the place, who have been attacking you know, all through the Central America area and, and Mexico and just political officials are being bought out. And it's just very, very bad. We have talked about it in our program before. And, and they're feeding into that instead of like, let's help people where they are and let's bring people in legally into the country. We need a lot of people in America. We have so many jobs now, we need people to fill them. But you can't fill them if you come in legally. Come in legally. I believe, and pray about this. I know we gotta go, think about this. If you wanna pray for America, pray for our our, our leaders, that they would sit down and do the right work to, to restructure our immigration programs and allow as many people as possible to come into America the right way, the right way. to be a citizen. I mean, that would be awesome to be able to do that. So you don't have to sneak in and crawl in and then hide out and you're worried about the police and at any used. moment you can be deported. And, and be used. Yeah, but if you rob the bank, think about it. You may run, get away for, for a while, but eventually if they find you, you have to live your whole life looking over your shoulder because you broke the law. And so, of course, you know, that's not gonna be a bad, that's gonna be a bad existence. So one day you're thinking everything's normal and they pick you up for the for the bank charge. And then you get taken to a jail over if it's illegal, you alien, you get take you get exported out of the country, deported out of the country. Mm -hmm. Why do that? Why not just come in legally? And I'm seeing these families. I mean, think about these little girls you're about to see. They, they pay ten thousand dollars to the drug cartel to be able to bring them over. This is Maria here on the border, right? Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. Basically, they walk till they find an agent and they turn themselves in. So they want to see you right now. Definitely. They want to get apprehended. Like I they said. They want to get processed. They want to get processed, given the papers, then they go north and they have legal papers to be wherever they're going to be at. Si the dinero. cartel attempted or attempted to kidnap his sisters. Las pequeñas. So they, they screamed out of, out of fear. And uh, of course, afterwards they ran. They were to yeah. Because the girls were screaming. Because the girls were screaming, so, and, and they ran, and they were able to to prevent them from being kidnapped. Okay. They're by themselves. How long Got, have they been traveling by America? themselves? Eight She's ten years of age, with Manita. Ten years of age and eight. Ten and eight, and yes. you've been traveling alone for how long? Este, ¿dónde se te perdió tu mamá? Okay. They were traveling. Um, their mom set them back, set, uh, set them down. She said she was going to go buy something for them to eat and never returned. How long has she been traveling with the baby? ¿Usted tiene cuánto viajando con la bebé? Dos meses. Dos meses, two months. Two months. Doesn't that break your heart? Her mother never returned. This whole environment is ripping families apart. It's causing people to have a false sense of hope. It's causing people to be trafficked by cartel. And think about it, I mean, that's just, it's like prostituting a people. It's like, it's like criminalizing a people. And, and it's like, why would you wanna harm these? You know, I know the Lord's having compassion over this. You should be having, I mean, as Christians, our hearts should be broken over this and, and, and seeing the fact how people are being used for political gain and not even thought of being ripped out of their own homes. Mm. And I remember a man in Syria that we had him on, on VFN TV, he was saying, listen, we don't wanna leave Syria. We wanna stay in our home. Thank, Mr. Thank uh, President Trump for helping us stay in our home. 
We don't want to buy into this political manip manipulation he was mm. talking about. But listen, Pastor John Kilpatrick, Church of His Presence, was talking about this very thing as he was ministering right there in the Texas area, seeing the, what the, the families that are coming in by the thousands uh, illegally into our country. Let's join Pastor Kilpatrick now. I have uh, a church out there, a Spanish church that I go to and preach at a lot of times. I know them. I've been there a number of times. It's a large Spanish church. Last Sunday, last Tuesday evening on Tuesday night, they had about 1,500 people there, 1,800 people. So um, El Paso is ground zero for all the immigration battles and that kind of thing that's going on. Well, the church where I was at, they take in 100 people a day from immigration. ICE brings them to this church. And they feed 100 people a day, brand new people every day. They clothe them. They have bathing facilities there for them to take a bath. So this last Tuesday when I was there, <clears throat> they, well, I stepped back to the restroom right before service started, and they had over 100. I'm sure there was over 100 people back there. They had just fed and just gave them a bath and they had some new clothes on. They'd been, some of them hadn't ate in 10 days. Some hadn't had a bath in 10 days. And so I just saw it as I was going through to the restroom. I spoke that night. I spoke on revival that night. <clears throat> had to speak to an interpreter. But right at the end of the service, um, an appeal was made. And those 100 people that I saw was one of the first ones to run to the altar. Just jump to the altar. And <clears throat> during the time I was preaching that night and talking about revival during the time I was preaching, the people just, they were just wailing and crying. I saw people crying everywhere. And especially the ones that they brought in, that was their first service that they had been in. They came forward and I'm telling you, it was heartbreaking. I cried and cried and cried and cried. I came home that night and I called Brenda and I was still weeping. I couldn't help it. I dreamed about it all night. You know, <clears throat> when you're looking at the political aspect of something, everybody gets all worked up. But when you look at the human aspect of it, it's quite a different story. And that doesn't mean that I'm not uh, behind the president trying to secure the borders because I am. And I appreciate him trying to secure this country. But I also can't help but be moved by people that had a, hadn't ate in 10 days and hadn't had a change of clothes in 10 days. And they're just struggling trying to find freedom and a better life. It was, it was sad. And so that day whenever I got through, I just went down and I just took every one of them and just held them. And uh, I had an all-weather coat on that I, when I pray for people, I always wear that all-weather coat to keep from getting chilled. And man, whenever I left out, there were just tears. The front of my old weather coat was just soaking with tears where those people had cried. We're called to all nations. He says to go, go into all the world and tell them that God loves them and God's got a plan for their life. And so you can be a good American by you know, enforcing the laws and running for office and, and suggesting your ideas for laws. But as Christians, we also, you know, are compassionate about everybody, everyone on the face. So we're, if there's a wall, we're on both sides of the wall. That's you know, right. we should be supporting missionaries or being missionaries in Mexico, Central America, you know, uh, Peru and all the different South countries, America, South sure. America that's down there in Brazil. And just, uh, it's, it's, so a wall is not a per, saying it's my four no more. It's mm -hmm. actually about how to sustain your house, how to sustain your business, your yard, your state, your nation. You can't have one without walls. You know, and speaking of that, you know, that's, that's the one job of the president of the United States. And President Trump was just down at the walls. You can see right now as we're talking, he went down there to be able to, to, to explore and to find out what was going on, meeting with the Border Patrol officers, as you're seeing him here. And he's getting his goal, is, he said is, uh, he should have 400 miles of border wall fencing done mm. by uh, 2020, I believe he said, wow. 2020. And he's, they're strengthening the wall in some places, but these border officers are so thankful I wish you could have seen this whole meeting as to hear some of the leaders talk. And they were saying, thank you, Mr. President, for funding us. Thank you for, for providing. We were getting hurt. We were getting injured. 
One particular a Border Patrol officer, she got hit with like a lawnmower type blade as they threw it through her windshield and she was able to throw her arm up to stop it as an illegal alien was attacking her. And, uh, and you're dealing with the cartel. You know, these people are innocent. Most of these people are just being told, you know, you can get in and everything's going to be all right. You just give us $10,000 and we'll get you in. The same time they're, they're convincing these people to move in, about a, 10 miles up the street, they're coming over the border with drugs on the other end, bringing that's in right. fentanyl. Fentanyl, yeah. that's actually, yeah. you know, drops of it could kill an entire, you know, fentanyl can, and, and hundreds of people, enough came in to kill, I think, a half of America's population. Oh, yeah. Or a quarter. It's just a small amount. I just saw the other night yeah. they could take out the whole uh, city of Cleveland. Yeah. Just with a little tall, small amount. But that's a, a, right. a really important what you said. They're, they're sending them over, yeah. distracting. And we all look down there. And I think, I want to talk about this too before we, I know we got to go. But that, that, the, you know, prophetic word was given by Demetrius Dudeman mm. about, you know, something would happen in the center of the United States and everybody's attention would go right there. And as everybody was focusing on this attention, we'll make the word available, for you, available, for, available to you on vfnkb.com on the torch. But understand this. He said they all would look. This is a prophecy that was given, being given by Demetrius, Dude, Demetrius Dudeman. And he said we would all look there in the center of the United States. And that's what they're doing right now. They're actually creating all this energy where everybody focuses there. Then suddenly, America was under attack. And all of our, our uh, nuclear facilities, whether it's nuclear power plants, uh, different things like that, we've got more of the detailed words that's on the top of my head. But all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, we, America was being physically attacked. And the Lord showed me that there will be a physical battle in America's soil. There's people in America right now who, who are against America. They, they, you know, they're against America. And so we have that word available for you. Uh, Rick Joyner, Morningstar Ministries, saw the very same thing. He also s saw that there would be another civil war that would happen in America uh, that's already in the history books of, of, of God and that it was going to happen because we didn't get to the place that we should have got to in the first, last one, which is everybody's created equal under the eyes of God and we all should be treated the same in regards to justice. And also America's bigger than the present borders of America. That's so much more, way beyond this time we haven't been able to talk about it. But I want to pray with you right now. Father God, I just pray a blessing right now over those that are watching and listening. God, we pray for all these families that are being manipulated. God, that you would comfort them, keep them from being harmed. Lord, bless their, their nations. Bless our country with safety and wisdom. Cause these political leaders to care about people and not use them, God. And Lord God, we ask you, dear God, protect this country, protect all countries, end abortion, send revival, send a third great awakening, and we pray in Jesus' name. And listen, comment below. Write to us at friends at vfnkb.com. What's your comments on this? And don't forget how easy it is. How easy is it? Love God, love others, and lead others to do the same. God bless. Wait, wait, wait. Don't go anywhere. Subscribe. Listen, together we can touch the world. That's right. Subscribe below. Right. Wait, 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 wait. Don't go away. Subscribe. We're going to touch the world. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Hey, be sure to check us out at vfnkb.com and also join the vfnkb community at vfnkbcommunity.com. Listen, your success is our success. Our success is your success. And our success together is kingdom success.